Hi, Josh here, and you're watching 610 Bob's Teardowns, where I take stuff apart to find out how they tick. Today, we're taking apart this guy, the Sawzall, also known as a Civic Gang Saw. We call them Sawzalls here. Anyway, this is cordless, in case you're wondering where the uh, cord was. There is none. Anyway, uh, let's tear it apart. Okay, so first step, we're going to remove this rubber boot the hard way. It's called tear it down. It's not take it apart and put it back together again. Come on. Take my blades, doll. Sheesh. Sorry for the scruff. Removable. Anyway. Okay, so this is interesting. The uh, rubber boot is actually the housing. I would have expected to have a piece of plastic around that or something, but there it is, the uh, gearbox assembly. Let's take this uh, handle piece off. All together by normal plastic type screws. They don't get into focus. And I don't think my camera's on auto. But it's like a wood screw except it doesn't have a point. It's kind of a cross of a wood screw and a metal screw. Now I should mention that this is not the first time I took this type of sawzall apart. I did take it apart previously but my stupid camera wasn't recording that. Not that I'm bitter or anything. So if it looks like I know what I'm doing, that's why. I don't actually usually know what I'm doing. So I don't want to get your guys' hopes up or anything. Oh, that's the handle in case you want to put it into a, your pocket. It doesn't quite work. I guess the order ladder would do it, but I'm not entirely sure what the thinking was on that one. Always one screw. And there's the inside of half the handle. Okay, so now, oops. Now we're into the good stuff. The handle. Or the trigger, I should say. I just do the handle. Now, I've taken drills apart before, and this looks pretty much the same. Got the this is the lock. And the way it works is like a little channel. There, I think you can see that. There's a little channel. When you pull the trigger, if it's in the lock position, it hits that little guy. And if it's in the unlock position, it goes there through there. Sorry about the handwork, my LCD screen's upside down. Okay, so there's the MOS. It's either a MOSFET or a transistor. Usually, for, it's for speed control, so you can uh, have the... It, so the blade goes back and forth at different speeds. The trigger, I believe it's just a sensor. It's probably like a resistor or even a, like something like a 555 timer, modulating, sending a module signal to the... Uh, transistor or MOSFET, but I'm just guessing I never actually looked at one of them and looked at them, like looked at one of them on a scope. Oh, that's interesting. Nice little battery assembly. I want to keep that. Oh wait, threw out all the batteries. Never mind. 
Now this is weird. This confused me first time I took it apart. Let's get that into the lens. This, I believe it's a voltage regulator. This has an LED in the front right there. I believe it brings down the 18 volts to 3.3 .3 or whatever the uh, LED runs at. It's actually pretty interesting while well, on the subject of an LED. It's a wire raceway. Probably because of heat. And it makes it easier to install so you can just have this guy as one assembly and just pop this in. I'm guessing at that. I'm not an expert in that kind of stuff. Never actually manufactured anything before, in case you were wondering. So, the, uh, the, uh, what's this called? Uh, gearbox. Held in by wood screws. Glorified wood screws, really. This, what I'm taking apart now, I, is actually the motor. In the plas this plastic part right here. Which it sounds stupid, and kind of is. This means your motor has a lot less protection than if it had a metal housing. But I guess it does decrease weight and increases profit margins. So there is that. Okay, so, like I said, that's the motor. This is the, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of dirt in there. Let's see, I'm going to pop this cover off. Ah, wait a minute. Forget what I just said. There is a metal housing around that. I must have remembered wrong. Metal housing magnets with a bunch of garbage in them. Again, the focus, new camera, sorry about that. Oh, well, I think you kind of saw it. In the back, there are brushes. These are the brush caps. Let's take one of them off. Off. Off, I say. It's just a standard type brush. Carbon type thing. It's getting my hand into focus. Come on, cooperate with me. Focus. Well, my camera chooses not to focus. There it goes. No, I lost it. I'll work on that for next time. But brush goes in here. The other brush goes in there. It is a brush motor. Brush rides along there. Switching what uh, coil the motor on the motor is activated anytime. If you want to learn more about that, Google brushed motors. Sure, there's a Wikipedia page. If there isn't, I'll make one. I know there's a Wikipedia page. So, let's take apart the gearbox. If I had to guess, I'd say the gearbox is made out of magnesium. But I am not going to clean it up and light it on fire to see, in case you're wondering. Actually, I sure wouldn't have to light it up. I just have to get an oxyacetylene torch. Eh, maybe another video. Now, if you're wondering if this was working or not, I think it was, but we switched uh, brands, so this was destined towards the trash can anyway. So if you're one of the people yelling, why are you taking apart a perfectly good sawzall? It wasn't really perfectly good. I mean, you saw the cruft that was in the motor. Oh, I never showed you this. Little fan there. In the camera. Little fan keeps the motor cool. Okay, this camera's depth of field has got to get changed. I'll make a note of that. Huh. Open sesame. Just need a little persuasion. There's a seal. There's a 
bearing that should go there. Okay, so this is the slider. Okay, this one was trash. Yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. But you can see that. That's all this is, is this part slides. Now, what make um there are uh Aaron. There that is metal, probably hardened metal on the sides inserted into the magnesium for this to slide on. Obviously, if it was just the magnesium, it would burn through and then it'll catch on fire. Which would be a neat recall, but buy one they wouldn't want. It also slides on bushing here. This tube slides on bushing there. And a bushing up there. So it's pretty stable. Now, this thing, turn the motor, that's what makes it go back and forth. This rides in that. So I go make a circle, then push it up, and it kind of goes like that. Now inside of this is a roller bearing. I, you're probably not going to see that. Yeah, I, it's not going to look. Oh well. Trust me, there are little roller bearings in there. Whee! Oh, well, drop that. So, how do I take this apart? Torx! Of course! Go get a Torx. Take this with me. And I'm back. So, just take off these braces. Probably should have got the impact wrench for this, or the air ratchet wrench. You can see, or you probably can't see. Come on, you had it. Apparently, talking to cameras doesn't work. I'm by myself, so I don't have a cameraman. Oh yeah, you're not gonna be able to see. It. There's a wear spot, which is what I'm trying to show you. The uh, that wheel. This is basically a bearing. It's a cheap bearing, but it's a bearing. It prevents the uh, thing from popping out, obviously. I, don't, I guess I call that a flywheel? Yeah, I guess I call it a flywheel. Or would that be a crankcase? Or not a crankcase, a crankshaft. Or a crank reel. Yeah, there we go, a crank wheel. Pretty sure I just made that up, so uh, don't go by me. It's just one buried in grease. Same thing. Now let's pop this guy out. Let's pop this guy out. Come out. I command you. It's funny how that never works. So here's the secret. 
This is actually a gear. A spur gear. See? Spur gear. And the sh end of the shaft on the motor is also a gear. So that's what slows it down to uh, so that it's not going like a really, really quickly. Although, I tend to think that sawzalls do go quickly, but that's just me. Now, I should say we go through, and we, I mean, my dad's HVAC business, we use sawzalls all the time in the field. We go through them quite quickly, and it's kind of easy to see why. Generally, what would happen is grease will come out the front here, and that's when you know it's hosed. Obviously, because there's, it's just steel on steel. High rubber, high speed steel on steel, that thing's gonna cook. So your runtime is severely limited. Now, if you made this like a roller bearing, made this flat and made everything bearings, you could actually get a, uh, well, a pretty long lasting reciprocating salt. Be expensive, but it'll be a lot better quality than steel on steel. But that's what you get. So I hope you like that. Uh, I'm all greasy. I can't even touch my camera. It's my new camera. It's a DSLR. Yeah, DSLR. Even when it's trying to say DSL, I don't know why. But if you like that, which I hope you did, because or else I just destroyed a uh, sawzall for nothing. Anyway. If you like that, uh, let me know. I like to do more of these. I think it's, this is a great way to learn how to do your own design by finding out how other people design stuff and find out why stuff breaks. But, uh, yeah, subscri subscribe, like, share, especially share. I'm sure you gotta know someone who is interested in how stuff works, so let them know. Uh, I should have a banner over there or over there. I don't know. Different setting. But anyway, that's it for today. Thanks.